Attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. The subway pulls into the stop that signifies it's the start of the subway series the queen's version both fan bases headed to city field ready for what should be an exciting two-game set all for bragging rights where it is time for baseball as the yes network presents new york yankees baseball it's the new york yankees against the new york mets in the first game of a two-game set from city field here in queens and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Paul O'Neill and David Cohn. I'm Michael Kay. Both teams limp into this matchup. Who's going to persevere? Let's take a look at the pitching matchup for game one. It'll be Max Scherzer going for the Mets, 5-2, and 3.71. And you see the numbers on Luis Severino. We'll start with him, David. Severino, last couple of starts, subpar for him. Yeah, there really is a little bit of a concern in terms of Luis Severino and his performance. He looks so good, his first two starts coming off the rehab. And then all of a sudden, his fastball's a little short. Lost a couple of ticks off of it on the velocity side. And then when it's up at the zone, you don't get him back. They've been hit hard. He's given up six home runs in his last two starts, five of them off of that fastball. So that's certainly the first thing you look at with Luis Severino is how good his fastball is. All right, so let's take a look. The first two starts, he averaged 97.3 miles per hour with the fastball. They didn't hit it that hard. Now it's coming in a little slower and coming out a lot faster. So that has to be corrected. The Yankees are talking about he has to have better command if the velocity is not there. Yankees also need some offense, especially with the absence of Aaron Judge. And one of the guys that has to stay step up, especially in this ballpark, Paul, is Giancarlo Stanton. Well, Big G has had a career here at City Field, but, you know, the bad news is since off the IL, only three for 21. He has struggled. Good news is he's back in City Field. 23 career home runs here, and that's a lot. Uh, he is a huge force in this offense, and boy, do the Yankees need him now when Aaron Judge is out of the lineup. All right, so 23 home runs against the Mets, all of them at City Field, obviously. Willie Stargell's had the most home runs against the Mets with 27. Looks like Giancarlo Stanton will catch those two Hall of Famers in front of him, Stargell and Schmidt. Now we get a unique perspective on this Subway Series matchup, the rivalry. Luis Rojas, Yankee third base coach, he was a Met manager. Meredith Morakovich talks with him when we get back right here on Yes. I'm Meredith Morakovitz. Tonight marks the first installment of the Subway Series this season with a game tonight and tomorrow. One guy that's experienced this rivalry on both sides is Luis Rojas. He spent 15 years as a part of the Mets organization prior to becoming a Yankees coach last season. Earlier when I spoke to him, he said this is always a series he circles on the calendar. It's exciting, definitely. I was looking forward to it. Um, you know, a lot of familiar faces in my case, uh, but just, you know, what you're talking about, just the excitement, I think, bringing the city to one, you know, coming to one field, not this time in city field, but just hitting the let's go Yankee chant, let's go Mets chant. I know the players feed off of the energy. Uh, I think a great environment is created. Just the city of New York becoming one in baseball is just special. And one quick lineup note when it comes to the Yankees. No Josh Donaldson this evening. It's going to be DJ LeMahieu at third base. Just the evening off for Donaldson. He'll be available off the bench, according to Aaron Boone. Plenty more to come here on the Yes Network when we get back. Michael Kay will be joined by Paul O'Neill and David Cohn. First pitch coming your way after the break. Queens, the Mets have taken the field. And we'll take a look now at the Yankees starting lineup, which is brought to you by... Our good friends at TikTok. Jake Bowers in right field leads off, then Stanton's the DH, Torres at second. Anthony Rizzo is at first base cleaning up. Batting fifth, third baseman DJ LeMayhew. Isaiah Conifalefa at center field will bat six. Batting seventh, playing left field, Billy McKinney. Kyle Higashioka will catch. In the bat eight, the batting ninth, the rookie shortstop, Anthony Volpe. And that lineup will face this legendary right-hander, Max Scherzer, Mad Max. On the season, be his 11th start. His numbers are starting to round into form. 58 Ks and 53 in the third innings. And 
Let's go ahead and give you a little bit more in our pitcher scouting report brought to you by Nissan. He's been better of late. His first five starts, he had a 5.56 ERA. Since May 14th, really the last month, that's down to 2.35. Still a five-pitch mix. He's a mix master. More curveballs to lefties, more sliders to righties. And he messed around and got a triple-double re recently. He's got 111 double-digit strikeout games in his career. That is three more than Pedro Martinez. There's only a couple guys in history that are ahead of him. That's Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson. All right, the defense behind him, presented by Buick, McNeil, Nimmo, and Marte. That's left to right in the outfield. Beatty, Lindor, Guillaume, and Tana. That's third to first. The rookie, youngster Francisco Alvarez behind the plate. Max Scherzer's on the mound. The DH for the Mets tonight is Tommy Pham. Yankees at 38 and 29. The Mets are 31 and 35. Bowers is ready. Scherzer is ready and let's do it at city field first pitch is a strike we're underway rob drake is the home plate umpire bill miller at first roberto ortiz at second chad whitson is over at third uh, looking at that first pitch rob drake likes balls off the plate away coney early scouting report just saying <laughs> inside one and one and visions of dutch renner there for a minute <laughs> Yankees just finished the homestand, two and four on the homestand. Take a look at the scouting report on Rob Drake. He's pitcher friendly, Paul. More outside strikes, more inside strikes on righty batters. Rob's been around 25 years now. Two and two. Yankees lost two out of three to the Red Sox over the weekend. Before that, two out of three to the White Sox, so it was not a good week against Hosiery and the Mets. They've lost eight of their last nine. Well, they don't allow shifts anymore, but there are shades. I'll tell you that Lindor is practically behind second base for the lefty swinging Bowers. And way off the line is the third baseman, Brett Beatty. And the heels right up against the grass too, right? Every inch you can use on the dirt part. I did notice that Coney. He kind of walked in too. He was out on the grass. Three and two on Bowers. And the 38 year old righty deals. Swing and a miss. Got him. Got him on a change. All right, Paul, let's go to work. Keys to the game brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, this is Subway Series. There's always some excitement when the Mets and the Yankees play. You can't take that away. And something's missing. I mean, all of a sudden, the Yankees not scoring runs under three a game in the last six-game homestand. And, you know, Michael, if you figure it out, somebody's got to win. Both these teams are struggling. Mets lost eight and nine. Yankees lost four out of six on the homestand. Somebody's got to show up and win tonight, huh? That's the way it works. They don't allow ties. <laughs> All in one on Stanton. We detailed in the open how Stanton loves playing here. 23 home runs at City Field. Let's take a look at the Yankee leaders brought to you by Citizens. Made ready 23 home runs here at City Field. Well above the guys who are in second place. Harper, Rendon, and Utley. Each of them have 14. And that's even made more incredible. I understand when he was with the Marlins, they, they played the Mets a lot. But with the Yankees, he's not here that often to have that big of a lead. Well, some ballparks you just feel comfortable hitting in. And, uh, you know, I used to feel comfortable if I could reach the seats in a, in a certain area. But that doesn't matter to Stan. He can reach seats anywhere. High drive, left field, going back McNeil on the track at the wall. He's done it again. See ya. One nothing Yankees. Michael, do I need an Emmy for my scouting report? I, I told you, different ballparks, you get home runs. It's just the way it is. And this is what they need. Obviously, Stanton can dominate offensively his sixth of the year. Only his fourth hit 
off the IL, but a big one here to start off here in City Field. Coney, we got a very small booth up here. I'm just warning you, don't hit the wrong button up here. <laughs> yes, he's gonna, you'll lose a finger. Michael will take a finger off. He's hawkeyeing you. <laughs> Torres takes low. It's 24 home runs here in Queens. Yeah, to your point right there, Michael. There's some things you just can't explain in this game. We have so much, so many numbers. Advanced analytics. How do you explain the personal nature of how Stanton feels in the batter's box in this ballpark? It's just remarkable. I'll defer to Pauly on that one. I know what it feels like to give him up like that. <laughs> I don't know what it feels like to hit him like that. I, I think it comes to, you know, we talk about young kids and how they just get a little confidence in their better players. and. You know, there are just certain places you walk into, and as a hitter, you just have great memories, and it just it, you you walk in with confidence. What was your city feel, Paul? What was the ballpark that you did things like this? I, I love Texas because I, like I said, Texas, you could go to dead center field. That was one of the ballparks I knew I could go deep to center field. But uh, you know, you always like the fields that you hit well in Texas, Cleveland. Anaheim was always good. Three and two on Torres. And it's his fourth career home run off Scherzer and tie for the most he has against any pitcher. Popped up shallow center. Nimmo there. Two outs. But well, this gave you plenty of time to call it, Michael. And you can see right there off the barrel of the bat on the super shot. There was a lot of hang time there. That was well above Ray Guy territory. Six and a half seconds of hang time. 408 feet and 110 miles an hour off his bat. It's torture for a pitcher, Coney. You know where it's going to land. It just takes a long time to get there. Huh? Michael could load up. He could really gather on that call. <laughs> And Rizzo gets plunked because of course he does. That's that's what happens with Rizzo. So he's on first with a hit by pitch. A spinner inside actually just hit him on the back toe. Well, the Yankees don't need another toe injury. That's for sure. It's a bad subject right now. Mm. Here's DJ LeMahieu. Grounded to short, Lindor steps on the bag, and that'll do it. But in the first inning, Giancarlo Stanton does what he does here at City Field. He belongs to the city, and the city belongs to him. His 24th home run in this ballpark. When it lands, the Yankees have a run. The Mets are coming to bat. He's a one nothing lead. Now let's take a look at the Mets starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. Nimmo in center leads off. 21-year-old rookie. Francisco Alvarez bats second. Jeff McNeil in left field hits third. Cleaning up, shortstop Francisco Lindor. Starling Marte in right field. Brett Beatty at third. Tommy Pham, the DH, from bat seventh. Batting eighth, the second baseman, Luis Giorme. And Mark Canna is at first base. He's going to bat ninth. And yes, indeed, that is Luis Severino towing the slab at City Field here in Queens. And you see on the air, this will be his fifth start. Mixed bag so far. Let's give you his pitcher scouting report brought to you by Nissan and quickly the fastball watch. We mentioned it. We'll get a look at it right here. 95 and up. It's kind of the way it's been. You know, that's what you look at with Luis, the health of his fastball. That leads to big fly trouble, the home run, six in the last two starts. And, but he's a winner. That one is driven out to right center field. Bowers turns, looks, see ya. Game is tied. You talk about being shell shocked. If you're Seve, six home runs in the last two games, and now the leadoff hitter, you get a a big G home run, and then Nimmo just ties it up with one swing. No doubt about this one. So here's Alvarez. 
One and oh. For any pitcher, you can see Severino, the adjustment is to try to hit spots. If you don't have your good fastball, you better find a good location with it. And that's what the Yankee pitching coach, Matt Blake, said. If, if he doesn't get the velocity back, he's got to locate the fastball better. You can see immediately, I know the feeling, whenever I gave up a leadoff home run, it chases you out of the strike zone. You just feel like you have to be perfect. Now you're down 3-0. Ninety six miles an hour for the strike. You know, in Luis Severino's career, the Yankees have a team record of 61 and 28. You know, it's been a win day since 2017. The guy's a winner. It's a tough stretch he's going through right here. And you can see the eight home runs he's allowed since his return from the IL. And that's the most in the American League since May 21st. And Alvarez works a walk. I mean, just a fastball right there. I mean, it was clocked and it was going a long way. Not long for that apple comes up in center field. Signify a home run. No cheapy there. 429 feet by the time it landed. Jeff McNeil takes inside. McNeil is the National League's reigning batting champion, but uh, he has struggled this year. Hit 326 last year to win the title. One point more than Freddie Freeman, but hitting 274 so far this year. Two and oh. You know, Coney, I don't know about you know pitching, but you can talk about velocity. And you know, I know as a hitter, when you try to swing harder, you actually slow down a little bit. And I know that as a pitcher, you know your fastball's down. Is it a release thing? Is it just tired or you're just trying to throw too hard? A, l a little bit of everything. I think that you look at the delivery itself. Is he laboring to throw yeah. the baseball? And it doesn't look very free and easy right now, at least over the last couple starts. Mm -hmm. The home run was hit off a 95.3 mile per hour fastball. Foul back and out of play. Yankee defense presented by Buick, McKinney, Conopalepa, and Bowers left to right in the outfield. Infield, LeMahieu, Volpe, Torres, and Rizzo. That's third to first. Higashioka behind the plate. Severino's on the mound. Stanton is the DH. Me. I've already seen Stanton's artwork. High fly ball. IKF is there, puts it away. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. It's 77. No chance of rain. Humidity is 38%. Not much wind. What little we have out of the west at four miles per hour. Here is Lindor not having the season average wise that he wants, but still 43 runs batted in and 12 home runs. Last year he hit 270. He's hitting 216 right now. Strike. Last year is ninth in the MVP voting in the National League. You know, when you compare the two teams, both of them are struggling offensively. The reason the Yankees are nine games over 500, and the Mets are four games under, Yankee pitching is better and their run prevention is better. They have a much better defensive team than the Mets do. So the Mets have to straighten out the pitching and the defense and obviously they're trying to return to uh, what they did last year offensively. One thing that's becoming apparent in today's game with the new rules changes is that athleticism shows up all over the field on both sides of the ball running the bases playing defense. Three and one. On Lindor. Yeah, Michael, you were touching on the Mets offense. I mean, last year they were fifth in all the baseball scoring. This year they're 18th, so they have had a major drop off 
offensively. And there's a walk, second walk by Severino, first and second, still one man out. That'll bring up Marte. And that'll bring out Matt Blake. You know, just sitting next to you for the longest time, David, even if you're hurting physically, you're always able to generate more velocity. That's why you don't look at velocity for injury, but usually it's location that goes away if you're bothered physically. So you kind of befuddle them what's going on with Severino. Yeah, I mean, there, there's lots of ways to, to look at pitchers now, and with all the technology, we can measure every pitch. We can look at the spin rate. We can look at the movement profile, the ride on his four-seamer. All of those under-the-hood looks don't really show a lot with Severino, but the eye test, it looks like he's laboring just a bit, and it goes down to your question, Michael. The command, he's not quite reaching. You have to reach out there and extend to hit your spots a little better, and it looks like he's, he's a little bit inhibited. He's not quite, it's not free and easy. So the eye test is certainly how the ball's coming out of his hand. Looks like it's a little all over the map right now. And that'll bring up Marte. Now, Meredith, you spoke to Matt Blake. What's his take? Michael, I asked him about the fastball specifically and why the command just hasn't been there the last two starts. And he said sometimes Severino has a tendency to peel off towards first base a little bit and he loses his release point. So sometimes it's a little mechanical adjustment. Other times it's just about being precise with your intention of where you want to throw the ball instead of trying to overpower guys, which he thinks sometimes when Severino doesn't have that pinpoint command, he tries to do. They're working on it with Severino. Obviously a little rough start here for him in the first inning. Driven out into right field. On the run is Bowers going back. And he makes the play on the leap. The runners retreat. The throw in will not get them, but a tremendous play by Bowers, saving a couple of runs and an extra base hit off the bat of Marte. You know, it's amazing. You can make a game-saving catch in the ninth inning, and everybody remembers it, but you can also really change the outcome of a game by a play in the first inning. And Bowers might have just done that. I mean, that's a two-run double. And all of a sudden, Seve is not even close to getting out of the first inning. So a huge play from Jake Bowers. Now Severino loves it, takes a deep breath. His defense bails him out there. And now with two outs, here's the youngster, Brett Beatty. That fastball was 98 miles an hour. Home run by Stan, home run by Nimmo, 1-1. One, one. Now one and one on Beatty. Well, Beatty's kind of taken over the third base job. He's been a prospect for the Mets for a few years, but he kind of played his way into the minor or into the lineup. And Buck Showalter giving him an opportunity to, to run with this job here at third base. Base hit up the middle. Alvarez will score. Lindor will go to third. It's an RBI single for Beatty, and the Mets lead two to one. If you look what's going on, even the outs are, are, are getting hit hard. And then right here, about a big hit for Beatty and the Mets. But, you know, Seve's ball up in the strike zone, kind of tailing away. It's just a good pitch to hit from a hitter's up. Looked like a high changeup from Severino as he kind of pushed it in there. 89 miles an hour. Here's Tommy Pham. And a strike. Well, it's got to be tough first innings, Coney, when you, you know, you're, you've, you've thrown all your pitches already. I mean, you've got your changeup, your breaking ball. You're not happy with your fastball, so you're already searching here in the first inning. Yeah, he's throwing a cutter now and a slider. Fly ball right side. Bowers on the run into the corner. It's in the seats out of play. All of a sudden, progressively, his fastball is starting to catch up now. I mean, 97, that was 98. But again, even the, you, know, you talk about finishing your fastball, finishing that changeup gets it down in the strike zone, too. I mean, he's hanging the changeup and the breaking ball. Yeah, there's a little uncertainty on where to go beyond the fastball. 
especially to right handed batters with Seve in the past it's always been that good hard slider that he could go to to bury righties to get a swing and a miss when he needs it. One and two on Pham. Lindor is at third. Beatty's at first. Two men out. Two runs in. Two one nets. We're in the first. Two two. Kind of a case in point right there. Kind of a non-competitive slider, right? There's never a chance that he's going to swing at that. Mm -hmm. Look, the consistency of that particular pitch to right-handed batters is something that that's Severino's looking to find. Two and two. Check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. So the count goes full on Fam. That releases Beatty at first. Three, two, two outs and. Guillaume on deck. Swing and a miss. Got him. On a change. But the Mets scored two runs, two hits, two walks, and two men left. We played one, two one Mets. Well, check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. Let's take a look at Scherzer's arsenal on StatCast 3D by Google Cloud. Yeah, about 47% uh, four-seam fastball, still a good fastball in the mid, low mid-90s. And you see that slider changeup curveball cutter, that five-pitch mix, almost 10% at least on all of them. Uh, strike to Connor Falafa, so... Scherzer's team picks him up after he gave up the home run to Stanton. They get back two. You see from that stat, his slider's not working that great this year. Opponents hitting 286 against it last year, 183. That's predominantly right handed batters as well as he uses that slider. 18% of the time to righties, only 1% to lefty. So Scherzer, a definite formula on whether it's a righty or a lefty. Cutters and four seamers to lefties and more sliders and curveballs to righties. Staying away, away, away. Three and one on Conifalefa. That one is ripped to left field. McNeil makes the play. Ball is hit so hard it stayed up there. One down. There's no doubt Connor Falef has taken a, a, a little bigger hack this year. He's letting it go a little more. It's 107 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, he's really posting up on it on his front leg and, and really letting the ball travel. And it does. It adds a little more power to your swing. Kind of was gliding into the ball last year. But uh, yeah, he's taking a, a definite uh, harder swing. And a strike to McKinney. Oh, that's an old time camera. Wow. My dad used to have one of those. <laughs> that actually has film. That's the yes super shot right there. The, the slow. Yeah. <laughs> it does a good job, by the way. Two and two. Fans, go to at Yes Network on Twitter and vote for the Montefiore Einstein Player of the Week. Is it number one, the Yankees bullpen? Number two, Glaber Torres. Number three, Billy McKinney. Rip foul. The relievers don't get any respect, right? You can't pick one out. You got to go the whole the whole Yankees bullpen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Swing and a miss. Down goes McKinney. He had him out front, and then he went to that cutter down and in, and it just swung over the top of it. And again, Coney, those just setting this pitch up. Good cutter right off the inside corner. Yeah, that's his formula for left-handed batters when he gets ahead. Bury that hard cutter down and in. Higashioka takes a strike. Last 10 games, the Yankees have had an awful lot of difficulty scoring runs. They're four and six, averaging 3.1 runs per game. That's 27th in baseball. Their batting average in the last 10 games, 172, which is the worst in baseball. Now, you can make the case, obviously, they miss Aaron Judge an awful lot, but the guys that are supposed to pick it up, they have not. Rizzo struggled. LeMay struggled. Stand before that home run has struggled. Donaldson struggled. So they need those guys to do what they're supposed to do to pick up the slack for Judge. High fly ball, fairly deep left. McNeil back in front of the track. Now on the track, puts it away. Scherzer retires the Yankees in order one, two, three. Well, tonight's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. Some of the luster of the series taken away by the two big sluggers that are out, both on the IL, Aaron Judge, right big toe sprain, and Pete Alonso left wrist bruise and a sprain, both on the 10-day 10 10-day 10 IL, but they'll likely be on a lot longer than the 10 days. Guillerme leads off against Severino as we start at the bottom of the second, fouls it off, two and one. Or it's 2-1. Mets over the Yankees. 0-1 count. And, Michael, there is some good news on the injury front for once. Harrison Bader, who's been out with a strained right hamstring, is expected to go on a rehab assignment tomorrow with the Somerset Patriots. I spoke with Bader. He said he'll probably play seven innings as long as everything goes well. They're expecting him to be in Boston on Friday night. They could use him. Two and two on Guillaume. You know, Harrison Bader has been so valuable in center field that he, he already has five outs above average in stat cast and minimal playing time. He's already among the league leaders. That's how much of an impact he has defensively. That's well, kind of how it happened before as Bader got back in the lineup, kind of changed things a little bit, and then Judge followed him coming off the IL the first time. And they were a different team and uh, as well as they've played all year with those two guys in the lineup. Fly ball left field backing up McKinney toward the line into the corner. One out. Michael this booth reminds you of going to the Yankee Stadium sitting in the top row. This is pretty high. Oh, it kind of reminds me of the closet in my home. <laughs> It is very small. Very tiny. <laughs> and Paul, you're a little bit, you could fall out of here. There's, well, they there's put no me wall. On the edge yeah. Because they figured if I fall off the ledge, you guys could just finish the game anyway. So. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful ballpark, but they did not really make spacious booths. No. Even the SNY booth next door is very, very tiny. Wow. See how lucky we are? We are. Yankee Stadium, better food. But I'm sorry, just going to say it. <laughs> And I'll tell you another thing. While we're on the ballpark in the booth, we got the biggest big screen in the known to man. And we've got the smallest monitors I've ever seen them. I can't even see. So just look at the big screen. But then I don't get good replays. <laughs> line drive down the left field line. It's a base hit for Canna. Digging out of the corner is McKinney. And Canna picks up a one-out double. Uh, Coney, when you're struggling, you need a, a, an inning here or there where it's just an easy inning. And right there, you get a quick out, and then all of a sudden, 
Now a double, so you got to start grinding again. Can has been very valuable for the best, being able to switch over to first base. Pete Alonso's injury. And that one hits Nimmo, and he'll take first. It doesn't seem as if he blinked. You heard a little click when that ball hit him, which means it hit the hard padding there right above his elbow. And it blew it off his arm. That, that plastic plaid pad on his arm will give you a little confidence, I think, to kind of yeah. hang in there and take that one. So here's Alvarez, 21 years old. And there's a strike. The Indeed player resume on the youngster. Most home runs in the first 49 games of a career for a catcher. Alvarez second only to Gary Sanchez, who had 19 in that amount of time. And Gary's doing quite well now in San Diego. And he was a member of the Mets, a short-lived member of the Mets this year. Mets have also signed another ex-Yankee, Luke Voigt, signed to a minor league contract. Strike one and two. Well, Alvarez got on that home run streak. You see, 12 for the year. He's got nine home runs in his last 19 games. So he's he's been on fire. He's got a little confidence. Michael, you said at 21 years old, you just don't see catchers showing up doing these kind of things at this age. And he's impressed the veteran pitchers the way he handles himself and studies and pays attention to detail as a catcher. Sometimes rookies come up and they just take the job. He grabbed it. And his swing is legitimate. It's a big time power. First and second, one man out. Missed with the fastball and the count full of three and two. I don't think Sebi hesitated there. They called a balk. Runners are going to move up. Rizzo does not agree. He's going to have a conversation with the second base umpire who made this call. The Yankees bring the infield in now with runners on second and third. 3 2 count on Alvarez. Grounded to Volpe, charges, gets the short hop, sets, and fires the first, holding Canna at third. Well, anytime you can save a run with an out, I, I mean, uh, Yusefi's got to feel real good about it. And that's a big out, but now it comes down to this big situation with two outs. Try to get out of this inning. Infield backs up. Here is McNeil. Foul back. Paul, you didn't even you didn't even flinch. I just dropped a complete cup of hot tea, and you didn't even flinch. I didn't want to. I didn't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> you know, it's all about camaraderie up here. If Love I start it. throwing blows up here, it's going to be a long game. <laughs> the 0-1, grounded and passed. Lemayu into left field. That's going to score two more runs. Throw comes into second. It's a two-run single for McNeil, and the Mets lead four to one. Uh, this is what Sevy does not need. McNeil just kind of serving one the other way. And it finds a hole right down the line for two big runs. McNeil, you remember, he won the batting title last year. He beat Freddie Freeman by one point at 326 to lead the league. And he hits a little slap hitter. He was an all star and a silver slugger last year. So they expect big things out of him offensively. A little off year so far. So now the ball comes into play. That balk cost uh, Severino another run right there. It's two run score on that. Here's Lindor. He walked in the first inning. 4 1 Mets. 
And another balk. Did you see it, David? Did not. Take another look. He just didn't pivot. Yeah, they're calling him for not a discernible step to first base. It was more just kind of a pivot move. Boy, I've seen that throw over and never called. I don't know that I've ever seen two balks in an inning. Well, the same pitcher, huh? Oh, and two. Take another look. It's a shuffling of the feet. You see, he didn't, didn't step. His, his lead foot did not actually step over to first base. It was just kind of a shuffle move. And it's technically, that is the correct call. That was a balk. One and two. Well, nothing seems to be going right for Severino. Two and two. Marte on deck. McNeil leads off second. Three and two. You can see the balls to strikes ratio, the pitch count. Two outs in the second. And the payoff. Popped up. Shallow left. McKinney will make the play, and that'll do it. But the Mets score two more runs. They leave one. My feel and my, my belief in Anthony is that the cream is going to rise to the top. And I believe in his ability and, who, and, and the person that he's going to be an outstanding player in this game. And we've seen, we've seen signs of that already all year. He's had his fair share of struggles, but he's also been in the middle of a lot of winning. That was Aaron Boone before this game talking about Anthony Volpe and Anthony struggles. Now, Anthony, in the last 21 games, has an OPS of 361. The major league average for OPS is 728. He's also struck out 77 times this year, and he is he struggled. And unfortunately for him, he was at the plate making the final out on Friday and Sunday in the two losses against the Red Sox. Came to within maybe a foot and a half of being a hero with a walk-off home run on Friday. Ended up popping up. There's a ground ball. Backhanded by Lindor. Off balance to first. And the scoop by Canna as they get Volpe one away. And then on Sunday, he struck out to end the game against Chris Martin. So, yeah, there's definitely a learning curve. Through April, hit 217. OPS 670. The strikeout rate has gone up each and every month. What are you seeing, Paul? Well, his front hip kind of gives a little bit and it opens up. And when you do that, then you open up the outside corner and you really cannot get to the inside pitch as well. So uh, I think it's a minor adjustment, but I also think it's uh, it becomes something in your head where you're trying to force it. And that's where you start seeing those walk percentages go way down. When you're trying to force yourself a hit, you're not willing to take the walks. When Yankee um, managing general partner Hal Steinberg at the owners meeting today spoke to reporters and he said he supports Volpe and uh, they are not at this point considering sending him down. They have belief in the kid and they knew that he would have struggles. So he is here. Well to Paul's point his base running is so valuable that the walk rate being so low is the real story there. You can go through ebbs and flows and not get your hits, but getting on base so that you can steal bases because mm -hmm. he's so good at that is really the the part that burns the most, I think, at this point. He has played in every game this year. On the homestand, though, they did not start him in two of the games, one of the doubleheaders and then Sunday night baseball. 
against the Red Sox. He also did not sit. He did not start, but he did end up playing in the game later on. The judge has been very supportive of Anthony. Been with him by his side all the way since spring training. He is a force on the bases. You got to get on base. Broken back, ground ball grabbed by Canna. And he flips to Scherzer, two away. Again, it looks like uh, Scherzer's kind of settling down, and, and Seve's still kind of just trying to get inning through inning. So, uh, you know, two separate scenarios from your starting pitching. Give a veteran pitcher a lead. Changes his whole mindset out there, his body language, everything about it. Here's Stanton. Hit a home run his first time up. He was one for 14 coming into that at bat in the first inning. And he gets plumped. Well, both players that went deep got hit on the elbow. And, you know, I was just going to say, you make minor adjustments as a hitter. And it looks like Stanton's a little closer to the plate, a little more closed tonight, which will keep you in there a little bit longer. Let's see this ball running up and in. Same thing, right off the elbow pad. Here's Glaber Torres. Slider in there for strike. We're in the third inning, it's 4 1 Mets. One and one. Sam leads off first. Soft ground ball, Lindor goes the short way. And they try to turn two, they just needed one. So that made no sense. Six four force ends the inning. NYU Langone Health, the number one hospital in the U.S. for neurology and neurosurgery. By the New York Lottery, get out there and play. Please, play responsibly. Must be 18 or over. By Suffolk Credit Union, empowering your possible. And by Burke, the top rehabilitation expert serving the tri-state area. Every expertise for every life. Look how happy you are, Michael. Yeah, it must have been a while ago. <laughs> A nice talk with Gary before the game, one of the greats in, in baseball. Always good to see him. I don't know. I think the Yankee side was pretty strong on the celebrity there. We, we got Jay-Z. Yeah, that's right. And Paul Simon. Paul Simon, very strong. They, they let the dogs out here in the World Series. Don't you remember? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> was it the Bob Man or something? Uh-huh. Like One and one. Base hit through the right side. Marte starts off the bottom of the third with a single. Marte, you've got to really keep an eye. 18 stolen bases on the year. Career high, did it twice with 46 stolen bases. So you can rack up the stolen bases. Here's Brett Beatty. Burner goes, ball is dropped by Higashioka, so no throw, a stolen base for Marte. Just got ahead of himself a little bit, got handcuffed. Marte had a great jump. Well, that gives Marte 333 stolen bases. That sounds like a lot, right? 
Mm -hmm. Ricky's only got four, 1,406, so he's got a few a few years to catch him, right? Better get hot. <laughs> wow. Three and zero on baby. That's a strike. Three one. Now three and two on Beatty. Marte at second, nobody out. Bottom of the third, it's 4-1 Mets over the Yankees. First game of this two-game Subway Series. And there's ball four. Severino really labor. He's thrown 62 pitches. Only two times have the Mets hitter swung and missed. Once at a fastball, once at a changeup. And just goes to show you that any third pitch, that slider, cutter, whatever, it just has, hasn't been reliable for him as of yet. It puts you in search mode as a pitcher. Where do I go to? At, you know, if I, my fastball is getting hit and I don't have my slider, then you're reduced to just throwing changeups. Not a lot of misses. A lot of Mets hitters very comfortable in the box. Pitch the fam. Is a strike on a slider. Foul away, 0 and 2. There's a fine line, Coney. I mean, you want to continue to build him up, you know, get him out there, get his pitches in, but also, you know, you're in a. a a point in the season where you're really struggling for wins. So, you know, you you, you want him right. Uh, you want to build him up so when he is good, he can get deep in the game to you. But, you know, he's just in so much trouble every inning. Yeah, you can't let this game get out of hand right here. Well, it's not a good look for Severino either as he strikes out Pham because remember he had a couple of rehab outings and he was pressuring the Yankees. I want to, I want to pitch in the big leagues. I'm ready. And, you know, the first two stars looked like he was right, but he wasn't ready, or there's something wrong with him. That is the question, and really it's his secondary pitches, as we pointed out tonight, that have been unreliable so far in the last couple of starts, and that's continued tonight. Here's Guillaume. Well, that was just a, a courtesy throw. If that was done with more urgency, they had a chance because Marte was leaning. Skyed the other way off the bat of Guillaume. Foul ball. Well, one thing is for sure, the fans are not tired of the Subway Series. Mm -hmm. It's a big crowd here tonight. So even though the superstars aren't in the lineup, the people are here. Ground ball up the middle and booted by Glaber Torres. And it's thrown away by Volpe. Ball carries right back, so everybody remains safe. And the bases are loaded. Torres made a huge error in the Sunday game that helped the Red Sox win, and he just booted a double play ground ball that would have ended the inning. Yeah, these are the things you need as a pitcher when you're struggling. Just basically whipped it off his toe, and Volpe tries to make a play. This kind of launches it. Fortunately, Rizzo gets a good read, and the ball does not end up in the dugout. Looked like maybe he was trying to flip it with his glove, make a glove flip, and got ahead of himself there. So bases loaded for Canna. Checks the swing. 
He tells Boone, I got it. Let's see if he does. Yankees back for the double play. That scored a fielder's choice, E4. Two and one. One of the best fastballs he's thrown all night, but just off the outside corner did not get the call. Nagy bullpen obviously rested. Yesterday was an off day. Thursday's another off day. You can have a lot of off days in the month of June. But they certainly don't need a three inning outing from their from their starter. Grounded to third. There's one on to first. Not in time. Run scores. Throw over to third. And he gets back. So an RBI for Kenna reaches on the fielder's choice. The out at second is a 5 4. In any team that you give extra outs, whether they're good offensively or not, they're going to put up some numbers. And, and so far, the Yankees have given the Mets extra outs in this inning. Kind of was completely safe there, no problem. But. Uh, you know the double play ball is what's really haunting Sevy right now. Nimmo cracks one foul. Let off the bottom of the first inning with a long home run off of Severino then was hit by a pitch. Came around to score in the second. Three innings he's been up now three times. Goes around 0 and 2. Just kind of feels like Sevy's reduced to a two pitch pitcher now. Just fastball changeup. No real establishment of a slider or a cutter. He's thrown 11 sliders, five cutters. No swing and misses on either one of them. That's a hard way to pitch. You know, when you're down, when you have a good slider and you're reduced to two pitches, that's a fastball right out over the heart of the plate there that Nimmo hit for the homer to lead off the game. His fastball's actually gotten better as the games have gone on. So Everino is locating a little better with it. Swing and a tip into the glove of Higashioka. That'll do it. One run on just one hit, one error, two men left. Well, the Yes app is more and more ways to watch and experience live Yankees, Nets, and Liberty games, more ways to interact with family and friends, and more ways to win big cash prizes. For the best seat in the house, download the Yes app now. Remember, direct to consumer is now available. Cadillac scoreboard 5 1 Mets as we go to the fourth inning. Anthony Rizzo leads off. Anthony's 0 for his last 24. And one for his last 30 since that collision with Fernando Tatis Jr. at first base when the Padres were in town. Oh and two. And that collision was on May 28th. He missed the next three games in Seattle. And he has just one hit since coming back from those three days off because of the stiff net. And there's a base hit, goes the other way. Big hit for Rizzo as he leads out the fourth with a single. You know, the night, uh, the Friday night game that we did, Anthony Rizzo had some decent swings, got nothing for him, and then it kind of went back right into the slump thing. But you know, th this is a good swing, two strike swing, slap it the other way. That's how you get out of it, right? Line drive over the shortstop's head. Yep. How many times I heard you say that over the years? <laughs> I've been talking to myself. I was talking out loud, Cody. You heard? Yeah, me? I heard. I heard all the way from right field. <laughs> 0 
0 1 on LeMahieu. He grounded out to short in the first. He's now six for his last 42 in his last 11 games. And that 0 for 24 for Rizzo, that was a career long slide. Driven out to left field and deep. McNeil back, turning, looking. See ya! A home run, a two run shot for LeMahieu. And it's now 5 3 Mets. Well, a big adjustment by DJ LeMay, who first time up, he kind of came off the ball and then an easy ground ball, but stays with this ball. And this is what he does shoot the other ball, the hard stuff the other way. You get a breaking ball, you're allowed to pull it, and he'll pull it out of the ballpark, especially when Scherzer hangs it. Here's IKF. Joe Torre used to call those personality at bats, right? Yeah. Got some improved personalities in there. Yeah. Two guys who really needed it. Sky the other way and out of play. Seventh home run of the year for LeMahieu. Yeah, just a little spinner, and that's the one if you stay on it. But the approach the other way, you'll get out in front and extend and keep this fair. Really good at bat. An adjustment by DJ LeMahieu. Popped up shallow center field. Who's going to get it? No one. Nimmo can't hold on. It's a base hit for IKF. IKF dunks it in. I think Giorme made a really good play because IKF was heading to second base. Watch Giorme kind of circle back and keep IKF at first base. A really good play. Good read too as he had a chance to take the bag but thought better of it and rightly so. With Billy McKinney big cut 0 and 1. Wait, IKF hits an absolute rocket his first time up 107 yeah. miles an hour he's out. And he gets a hit off of that. Mm -hmm. It's a John Sterling line in there somewhere to Susan I think. <laughs> One and one. Grounded foul. Yankees obviously a different team without Judge. With Judge in the lineup, they're 30 and 19. With him out of the lineup, they're 8 and 10. But more significant, they score about five runs per game with Judge and three and a third runs per game without him. Snap throw to first. IKF gets back. This is kind of reaction play from a catcher. Watch the ball takes him inside. It's a little snap throw to first base. It's got IKF leaning. A little bit of a disadvantage being a right handed first baseman there. Foul ball. Another foul ball making Scherzer work. Sure, the Yankees front office in the offseason started looking for depth pieces, and you know what? How many left handed outfielders are out there with some pop? Well, they, the Yankees had a sort of a for, for sale sign on, you know, on, on the window. They, they took them all in, and they're getting something out of all of them. Billy McKinney, Willie Calhoun. 
Jake Bowers. All of these guys were minor league free agent signings. And they've all been very useful for the Yankees. Five three, Mets lead the Yankees. Top of the fourth inning. Two runs in in the inning. IKF leads off first with a three two count on McKinney. Runner goes. Grounded and off of Kana. He's going to be able to get the out at first. Now moving to second, Kana Falefa. Long at bat, McKinney actually hit the ball hard. Kenna holding IK off on, basically on the line, probably why he made this play. So now IKF in scoring position. Here's Higashioka. Foul back and out of play. Scherzer at 65 pitches here with one out in the fourth. Two guys who certainly needed those hits. The single by Rizzo, the home run by LeMahieu. One and one. Big crowd here at City Field. Looks like a sellout. Same expected tomorrow. Great pitching matchup. Verlander against Cole. 1-1. One, one. Goes off speed. Curveball. 1-2. and two. And Kyle Higashioka has hit 326 off of fastballs this year. I think Max Scherzer knows that. I would expect another breaking ball. He's hit 139 off of breaking balls this year. He's always been a good fastball hitter, has Kyle. One, two. Grounded the slider foul. You hold that back up there, Coney. That back up slider is supposed to go away from a righty, and it, it, it frustrates you so much as a hitter because you pick up the spin and it just goes opposite of what you're used to. Watch this ball actually start to go back in, almost like a two seamer. Yeah, he's trying to bury it, too. Two and two. Tries to go to the changeup down and away. A lot of times when you're a pitcher and you try to snap off your best one. That's the one you get a little quick on, and you end up hanging it or backing up on you. There's a base hit to left field. IKF was headed back to second, so he'll just advance to third. It's a single for Higashioka, and the Yankees have runners on the corners. Uh, to your point, Coney, I think that Scherzer almost outthought himself. I mean, he continually went to breaking balls, change ups, finally gives Higgy a fastball. And what's he do with it? Smokes it to left field. Higgy can hit a heater, and it's right there, and he's on it. That's going to bring out the pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner. Spectrum One is fast, secure, and reliable. Internet for $49.99 a month. Free advanced Wi-Fi and a free mobile line. Restrictions apply. Visit Spectrum.com for details. What does a pitching coach tell a 38-year-old pitcher who's going to the Hall of Fame, David? Well, I think what he's telling him is just uh, take a break. Let me catch your breath out here. I was talking to Ron Darling before the game, and he said, at this point in the game is when Scherzer kind of struggles with men on base with the pitch clock. He's so deliberate as a worker that he's had trouble kind of uh, adapting to the pitch clock as many veteran pitchers seemingly have. There's Anthony Volpe. Popped up behind the plate. Alvarez gives it a look. Out of play. Now these are the bats if you're a young kid and you're Anthony Volpe your mind just starts racing you know you try to get it done and now all of a sudden you're down in the count Scherzer a veteran pitcher knows it. He's going to try to find a weakness. This is an important bat, you know, mentally for Volpe to get this run in. Now 
know, if you look at the uh, the matchup here, the catcher and the hitter, when you add up their ages, they're 43. They're only five years older than the guy on the mound, Max Scherzer, who's 38. Volpe, 22. Alvarez, 21. Yankees runners on the corners with one out. And the 0-2. Grounded inside third and fair and down the left field line. IKF scores. Higashioka is going to be held at third. Oh, did he need that double and an RBI for Volpe. It's 5-4 Mets. Well, if you're a hitter, you hit mistakes, and that was a mistake. A slider that's supposed to be down off the plate looking for a strikeout, and he hangs it right there. Volpe, you know what? You got to be ready because you hit mistakes, and he certainly did. Hammers it down the line. A big hit for the Yankees and a big hit for Anthony Volpe. Good job by McNeil over there on the wall to keep that from getting down the line. That would have scored another run. Probably Volpe would have ended up on third, too, with a triple. Infield in, Bowers at the plate. Second and third, one man out. Inside, 1 0. Oh. Bowers 0 oh for 2 tonight, a strikeout and a ground ball to first. Higashioka is at third, Volpe is at second. 27th ribby for Volpe this season. Well, this back and forth offense has really got the fans in the game, too. I mean, this is your typical Subway series, kind of a slug fest, kind of back at each other. That one is looped into right center field. That's going to dunk in for a base hit. Higashioka scores. Here comes Volpe. Here's the throw. He'll score. It's a two-run single for Bowers. And the Yankees have come back to take a 6-5 lead. Now, sometimes you make mistakes and a caution. Times have bad breaks cost you. But Anthony Volpe got a great read on this ball. We talked earlier how important it is to get him on base. A jam shot, and he knew where the outfielders were playing before this pitch was run. Watch, there's really no hesitation. He's going to score all the way. Roas has no problem sending him at this point. Well, that base hit knocks Scherzer from the game. He seemed stunned when he saw Showalter going out to get him. Dominic Leon will come on for the Mets. Scherzer with a rough outing, giving up a 5 1 lead. The Mr. Clean Magic stats. The Mets are 14 and 34 when a starter goes fewer than six or more innings. 17 and one when a starter completes six or more innings. So they're in that first category. Max Scherzer, who's got a first ballot ticket to the Hall of Fame, simply lost it here in this fourth inning. Mr. Clean, don't lie. <laughs> And Dominic Leone will come on. Hey, Steve Cohen, the owner of the Mets, uh, had a long interview with, with Joel Sherman of the Post and said, you know, our pitching has to be better. He said also we have to be better fundamentally, he said, but he was really concerned with the pitching, and the pitching has been bad. Pitching and defense, it's been an issue. As Verlander and Scherzer have struggled, Senga good and bad. Here's Stanton. Run on first, the one out. Leon deals, and there's a strike. One thing that Steve Cohen understands, it's return on investment. And he's made a significant investment in, to that pitching staff, including Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer right there. And You got to think if you're Aaron Boone now that you know you have come all the way back to take this lead that you know Seve's lease has got to be pretty short at this point. I mean you're you're out to win a game now and not you know try to lengthen Seve's outing. Absolutely. Great job by the Yankees beleaguered offense as of late to come back in this game. Led by two guys who we really struggling mm -hmm. Rizzo got it going and then LeMayu's big two run home run gave him life. 
And of course, Anthony Volpe on the back end. The two one, three and one. Three and one on Stanton, a home run, and he was hit by a pitch. LeMayo's two run home run started this five run inning and still going. Foul back. Coney, that ball almost went a long way. <laughs> you talk about a mistake and a bad person to make it to. All over oh, that pitch, yes. Right there. Swing and a miss, got him. Two outs. Well, you're almost okay with this because you had three aggressive swings if you're standing. And then there's some guys that, you know, you expect some strikeouts, some swing and misses because they can do so much offensively as far as hitting home runs. You know, on the other end, you, you've got guys, IKF, Volpe, that you want to, you know, cut down, put the ball in play, try to set the table for the big swings. Flavor Torres taps one to second. Guillaume is there, and that'll do it. So how do you get five runs if you're the Yankees? How do you take the lead? Well, it starts with this two-run home run off the bat of D.J. LeMayhew. Cut it close, and then the youngster, Anthony Volpe, been struggling that big double, and then Bowers with the two-run single, and the Yankees lead 6-5. Cadillac scoreboard, we go to the bottom of the fourth. The Yankees lead the Mets 6-5. The Empire State Building will light up in the colors of the winning team at the end of this ball game. Alvarez will lead off, and Severino still out there. Strike one. One and one. So the Yankees have picked up Severino. He gave up five runs in three innings, and he takes them out in the bottom of the fourth, leading by one, six, five. And as David mentioned earlier, this is a beleaguered Yankee offense. And tipped into the glove of Higashioka. One away. Okay, well, Coney, I think you talked about it last inning that his fastball is even getting a little more life as we go on. And that's what you're used to seeing. Some swing and misses, the ball kind of exploding at the home plate. And you just have not seen that in the last few starts. Pitch is high. 1 0 to McNeil. Kind of guided a single to the right of LeMahieu in the second for a two-run single. Popped up. Rizzo in foul territory. Rizzo, two away. Well, if you're Aaron Boone, you've got to be hoping that this is that inning that Seve could have three up and three down and, and get through one easy. My kingdom for a one, two, three inning, right? <laughs> Six pitches so far and since the Nimmo home run leading off the game off the fastball really it's been his fastball that's gotten better. We talked about that being the story. It's his slider that's missing right now. And there's a strike to Lindor 96 miles an hour. Marinaccio up for the Yanks. Oh and two. Yeah, it's amazing, Coney, that you can actually see on the monitor there's there's life on that fastball now. It, it, it's kind of moving at the end. It's kind of jumping, where it was just flat that first inning. Yeah, that's the eye test, right? It's coming out of his hand better. Life and location much better. One and two.
Severino deals. Well, Met fans uh, certainly escorted Max Scherzer off the mound with a chorus of boos. They were not pleased with his performance. Lindor's been hearing them as well. Grounded sharply to Rizzo. He's going to take it himself. Beats Lindor to the bag. And there's that 1-2-3 inning that Severino and the Yankees were looking for. Trivia. Let's take a look at what we have. Who are the four pitchers who started for the Yankees in the 2000 World Series? Tweet your answer using hashtag Yes Network Trivia. You guys should have that. You were on that. Coney, we, we, we got to figure this one out, huh? I know one guy is really not happy about his start. <laughs> Used to have like a, what was that? A, 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 a train whistle. Yeah, he, he's still not sending Joe Torrey Christmas no, cards. He's, he's still bitter. Bitter beer face right now. You know the guy who uh, came in for him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sitting to the right. Rizzo started the Yankees five-run fourth inning with a single. Broke an 0 for 24 slide. Yankees knocked Max Scherzer out of the game. Dominic Leon I'm is on a relief. I'm going back in 2000, so they had Bobby Jones. They had Hampton and they had Al Leiter. I think that's the only three that we faced from that, wasn't it? Because uh, we had a day off and then Leiter went back, right? Or did they have a four man rotation in that series? Well, you guys won in five. Right, so who? So Leiter pitched the fifth game. There had to be four others. Rick Reed? Ah, uh -huh, Coney, look at you pulling it out. I think Al Leiter had a 147 pitch game in that one game, just a heroic effort. By the way, we should congratulate our former colleague Al Leiter, Howard Johnson, Gary Cohen, Howie Rose, and Jay Horowitz. They were all inducted into the Met Hall of Fame last week, all well-deserving. Yeah, Jay Horowitz, he's been around the Mets for a long time, huh? Legend in the industry, now part of the, uh, the alumni program here with the Mets. Fly ball, left center field on the run is Nimmo. He's there to make the play. One out. The 2023 Scott's MLB All-Star Ballot is now open. Vote daily at yankees.com slash vote to decide who represents your New York Yankees this summer. One away. That'll bring up LeMahieu. He's one for two. And the one, that long home run off a breaking ball for Max Scherzer, his seventh home run of the year. One and oh. Top of the fifth inning, 6 5, Yankees, 6 7 and 1 for the Yanks, 5 5 and 0 oh for the Mets. Two and zero. Oh. There's a strike. You know the one concern that you have about Lemayu. Everybody goes through slumps. But his strikeout rate has jumped so much from last year and most of his career. And that's that's just not him. He's had times, you know, a week here, a week there, where he looks like he's on the brink of really turning things around and then, you know, kind of takes a step back. But, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm always comfortable when DJ LeMay, who is at the plate in a big situation. You know he's going to give you a good effort. You know he's not overwhelmed by much. And, uh, you know, he still has a lot of good at-bats ahead of him this year.
LeMay who calls his timeout. And the payoff. Couldn't hold up. He goes around. Two outs. A couple early fastballs kind of opens up to this slider and cannot hold up all off the plate. There's IKF against Leon. Grounded softly to second. Guillaume. And the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three. We're halfway through. Yankees up by one. Pride brought to you by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. Tonight's picture is of Kieran and Luca. Their dad is teaching them all about what it means to be a Yankees fan. The teacher, guys, use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Audi scoreboard 6-5 Yankees over the Mets. Coming to you live from the greatest city on planet Earth. Bottom of the fifth inning, first pitch to Marte is high. Can't help but think about King Kong every time I see the Empire State Building, right? <laughs> Can I look for him climbing up the side? <laughs> high fly ball. Fairly deep right. Bowers gets there and makes the play. I thought you'd think more of Faye Ray. <laughs> yeah, that's well, sure, Faye Ray was great. If he squint, he's right there. He's on the right-hand <laughs> side. There goes a the helicopter, but he's swatting at the helicopter. I love growing up the, the same age, same, you know, everything. So when Coney brings up these things, it, it you know, it, it rings a bell. I, I can remember. It's not like a story I'd never heard about her. <laughs> Perfect. Brett Beatty takes the strike. Owen oh two. One thing that man has never been short on is guts. Severino. Pride. Never afraid. It's a serious competitor. Yeah, how about last in or the inning that Glaber made the thing, looking over at Aaron Boone and saying, I got this, I got this. And this is a night where you're really struggling. And you know what? He did get out of it. There is a short leash, but he's 0-2 on the leadoff guy, on the second guy, rather. Fam is on deck. Well, the Mets and their fan base certainly frustrated with the way the season's gone so far. They have the highest payroll, I believe, ever in the history of professional sports, and they expected more than this at this point, as they have really struggled. And we mentioned they've lost eight of their last nine. And even with a payroll that with tax penalties will come close to half a billion dollars, They've got to use youngsters like Beatty and Alvarez and, and Viento. So there are some holes on a team with a with a three hundred and fifty million dollar payroll. Yeah, you really got to think that if Seve does not get Beatty here, that he's probably done for the night. So I think Aaron Boomer roll with him as long as he doesn't give up a base run. 
And that gives up the base runner. There's a single up the middle. Beatty two for two with a walk. That last at bat to Brett Beatty kind of crystallizes where Severino is. Jumps ahead 0 2 and no real place to go to get him out. Ends up working the count all the way back to full and then gives up a, a heater on a base hit. So he tried a slider in that sequence, couldn't get a swing and miss. Change up, kind of faded off the plate. So it's really about the secondary offerings. Fouled away. Looks like a broken bat for Pham. Yeah, when you're out in front of a changeup that far, you you bat to splinters. You hit it off the end of the bat, and that cup is kind of bored out to take weight out of the bat. It just shatters. That just hit the end of the bat and just splinter half of the bat off. This is the 27th season of the Subway Series. Ten of the years resulted in Yankee sweeps, four of the years resulted in Met sweeps, and there have been 12 splits. Soft ground ball. LeMayu gets the out at first, moving to second is Beatty. Again, now that you've got a man in a scoring position, I think that uh, Aaron Boone is going to go to the bullpen, try to get out of this inning. A good play by DJ LeMayu. Yeah, cutting that off in front of Opie there. That's a big out. The good news for Severino is his fastball is better tonight. We talked a lot about the fastball watch on Severino and a big talk right here. Going to keep him in there. I think Sevy talked his way in here, and I don't think that, you know, after the first couple of innings, Kona, you would have bet on Sevy trying to finish the fifth there. No way. Shades of Joe Torrey there, nose to nose with uh -huh. his pitcher out there. Well, Marinaccio thought he was coming in. A little bit of a deke. The guy who controls the door thought he was coming in. And a strike. Now, does he think he's best served to get Guillaume here? Because wins don't count anymore. I mean, he's not keeping him in to get him the win. You have to pitch five innings. That's a rule that has to change because the game has changed. And there's a base hit to left field. Beatty will score. So keeping in Severino backfires as Giorme with an RBI single. And the game is tied at six. Before you even get the words out of your mouth, Michael, I think you got your answer there. I think probably Aaron Boone was thinking if he made that move that Giorme would be pinch hit for. But it's all a move point now. We got a tie Wago. 6-6 six, six, here in the fifth. Marinaccio coming on. Stay right here. Shaky early from the first pitch. A leadoff home run on a fastball. We were talking a lot about his velocity being down. And a real struggle early in this game. Gets a couple of balks in one particular inning. Just a... Almost an early knockout for Luis Severino. It was, it was at a point where you thought you might get knocked out in the first two innings. He ended up staying in there, hanging in longer than Max Scherzer. Aaron Boone showed him a lot of confidence, but he ends up giving up the tying run in his last pitch of the night. Fastball was better. The secondary pitches, in particular slider, not quite there yet. He needs to get that going. So he went two outs into the fifth. Runner on first is his responsibility through 104 pitches and turns it over to Ron Marinaccio.
Now the big question is, would Showalter have gone to the bench to pinch hit for Guillaume if you brought in Marinaccio? Marinaccio is good against lefties because of the changeup. Also not bad against righties, so it would have been interesting to see if Showalter would have gone to a right-hander off the bench. He's got Vientos and the switch hitter Escobar he could have gone to. 0-2. Oh Michael, you got his number. Give him a call. I'm sure he'll answer. You know, I do have his number. I don't think he's counting his phone right now. <laughs> you have his number, too. So does David. Yeah, it's a, it's a valid point, Michael, the decision-making, and that's what we do up here is try to figure out what happened and why and what the choices were. There's just no way you think he kept him in there to get the win. That just doesn't matter anymore. It just seemed like the way he was talking to him was more of a confidence builder, like he was trying to pump him up. You know you need that man, Luis Severino, the rest of the way. You're going to need him to be a dominant starter. The Yankees are going to go where they want to go. One and two. Paulie and I were talking before. Mel Stottlebyer had a say, saying that you had a chance to get two pluses there. If you got Luis Severino out there and then Marinaccio gets out of that inning, you still have the lead and both guys feel good about themselves. So you had a chance to get two pluses. But you weigh that against Aaron Boone trying to build up Severino in his confidence. Nothing gets second guessed more than managerial decisions on pitching changes, when to bring him in, when to leave him in. Fly ball left field. McKinney is there, and that'll do it. But the Mets tied the score one run, two hits. One man left. We go to the six, tied at six. Thank you, Bob. We go around the majors. How about the Daniel Murphy story? Out of baseball for three years, signs with the Long Island Ducks, tears it up, and now signs a minor league deal with the Angels. Corbin Carroll, 362, eight homers and 23 ribbies, nine stolen bases last 25 games. Diamondbacks are one of the surprises of baseball. Where did the A's get a six-game winning streak, David? How did that happen? Amazing. And you know what they have, too, tonight is sort of that reverse protest where they're going to sell out the place just to show ownership. <laughs> uh, yeah, when, so the Las Vegas thing, when is, is, is that 100% uh, uh, or is it still up in the air? Hey, the devil's in the details. I don't yeah. think anything's a done deal just yet. Josh Walker comes on for the Mets to face the bottom of the Yankee order. Walker, 28 years old, he made his major league debut on May 16th and 37th round pick. So that does happen, that dreams come true. You can work your way back. In 2017, the Mets took him out of the University of New Haven in Division II, and here he is in the big leagues all these years later. Dreams are closer to coming true, Coney, when you're left-handed, you got a big breaking ball, right? New Haven's known for pizza, not left-handed pitchers. <laughs> What's the name of that place? Got clam pizza or something? Oh, yeah. Sally's and Peppy's. Oh. Modern. Three and one. So an old-fashioned slugfest here in game one of the Subway Series. Two teams struggling to score, so of course they put up 12 runs between them. Over five innings. Right side and grabbed there by Guillaume. Throw to first. Not in time. It's a single for McKinney. Well, McKinney runs pretty well. He's made some good outfield plays since he's been up here, too. This ball hit hard, finds the hole. Not cutting up. Didn't come up with it clean. Give McKinney an opportunity to get safe at first base. Heck of an effort, though. Mm -hmm. Didn't think there was any way there was going to even be a play. Neither did Can <laughs> Neither did Canna there. So he had to adjust in a hurry there to receive that throw first. Here's Higashioka. Ball gets away. McKinney will hustle a second on the wild pitch. Oh, 
All of a sudden, Higgy's at bat has changed now with this wild pitch. McKinney going to second base. Now it's get him in or get him over. One of the two. And don't roll over a ball to the left side. That ball is a foul ball. Boy, did he give that a ride. A breaking ball in, and even if you're trying to shoot the ball the other way, you kind of get around it and just hammer it. But, you know, now with two strikes, he's just trying to put the ball and play hard somewhere. Foul ball. Yankees have eight hits. The Mets have seven. Yankees with a runner on second. Nobody out here in the sixth. Six six game. Ball piece on deck. Foul the way. Still 0 2. Popped up on the right side. Canna on the run toward the seats. Runs out of room. McKinney dancing off of second forces Walker to step off. Foul back. Got a good fastball, 97 miles an hour. It's not wasting, and he's going after him 02. Several 02 foul offs here. Swing and a miss, got him. Got him with the curve. So that'll bring up Volpe and uh, had a double his last time up to drive in a run. We'll take a look at the pitching decisions presented by Sage in that at bat. Well, he gets down 0-2, the high fastball. Looks like Scherzer's in the driver's seat and then he does him a favor. Spins the slider right there in the wheelhouse. Volpe laces it down the line for big double. 1-0 on Volpe. Grounded foul, one and one. Swing and a miss on the curve, one and two. Walker's shown decent stuff here. We've seen the fastball up to 97. That slider, 11 miles off of that pitch with some good depth to it. Back to the screen, still one and two. 
You know, those are the pitches right there, Coney, that if you're Volpe, uh, you, you need to put in play. That, that's a mistake right there. And as a hitter, I don't know what's going to happen in this at bat, but you'll go back, and that's the pitcher you, that's the pitch you remember. I, I should have put that ball in play. Fly ball, shallow right center, coming on Nimmo. He can't make the play. Volpe hustling will go to second. He's going to make it. Moving to third is McKinney. Well, you make contact, you got a chance. Nemo usually comes up with this ball, but he just basically whiffed it. I mean, you know, if that caught leather, but Anthony Volpe running the whole way ends up at second base. And you take advantage of mistakes, you take advantage of extra outs, and now the Yankees, they got an opportunity to take the lead here. Nemo's reaction tells you all, need, all you need to know. He actually closed the glove like he thought he was going to catch it. And they he got no leather. They scored that a double, baby. Well, it didn't hit the glove. I he did not whip it. <laughs> exactly right. Ball with Bowers coming up. Show Walter takes the ball from Walker. Yankees have runners on second and third. One man out. Volpe has two doubles. Donaldson's coming up the pinch hit for Bowers. Today here at City Field was thrown out by Rick Pitino, the head coach of St. John's. And he threw it to Donovan Mitchell, who he played for Rick in Louisville, now an all-world guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Patino's had an unbelievable recruiting class. And many expect the uh, St. John's team to be in the top 25. Didn't put a Met hat on, didn't put a Yankee hat on, didn't want to alienate either fan base. You gotta give Donovan Mitchell props there with a Mookie Wilson jersey on. Nice. That's pretty good. Well, Nimmo's probably talking about, wow, I can't believe Volpe got a double on that. I should have caught it. As Jeff Brigham will come on Did and he? face Donaldson. He actually closed the glove. Yeah. <laughs> he, like he just was sure he's watch him. Watch him close the glove. I got this. I'm gonna catch it. Let me close it. Uh oh. <laughs> Where is it? Forgot everything but the ball. So Showalter went to Brigham once Boone went to Donaldson to pinch it for Bowers. Mets have the infield in second and third for the Yankees with one man out. Missed outside. McKinney's at third. The speedy Volpe is at second. Foul back here. One and one. It's such a different at bat, Coney, when you're a pinch hitter and you, you know that first base is open. You're thinking, you know, maybe they'll pitch around, maybe they'll do. And all of a sudden, you've got Stanton on the on deck circle. So, you know, if, if you're Brigham, you're, you're trying to get Donaldson so you can w you have some wiggle room against Stanton. High fly ball. Marte will make the catch. Tagging is McKinney. He'll score. Moving to third is Volpe. It's a sack fly for Donaldson in the pinch hit appearance, and the Yankees have retaken the lead 7 6. Well, that's a good job by Donaldson. A productive out off the bench. Uh, he's telling Stanton, you know, this is what I saw. This is how his ball breaks. Bring him a fastball cutter in that sweeper. And it just looked like Donaldson was trying to push the ball the other way. And it's kind of the easiest way to. To make sure you get that runner in. So here's Stanton. Home run, hit by pitch, and a strikeout. Two outs, infield backs up, of course. Volpe's at third. Pitch outside, 1 0. Two and oh on Stanton. Been hearing some let's go Yankee chants breaking out in the stands here. Three and oh. I still remember the first Subway series in 1997 at Yankee Stadium. And let's go Mets chants breaking out at Yankee Stadium. We never heard that before. And 
It was a real novelty back then, and all these years later, they're still going at it. Waves at the 3 0 pitch. So they gave him the green light. Swung the pitch out of the strike zone, 3 and 1. Volpe at third, two outs. Pitch. Driven out to right field. Going back Marte. He has room. He's there to make the play, and that'll do it. But the Yankees retake the lead. One run, two hits, one man left. Now it's time for the answer to the trivia question. Four pitchers who started for the Yankees in the 2000 World Series. So I'll take Nagel. You guys take the other three. <laughs> we already talked about Nagel, right? Well, Andy Pettit started yeah. so many games. So he's got to be in there, obviously. And the Rocket. Now, who could forget El Duque as uh, well? But Rocket throwing the bat at Piazza in there. And oh, yeah. Thought it was the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Nimmo wraps one deep to left field. And McKinney goes back to make the play. Now, we mentioned Nagel. One out short of getting a win. Piazza's coming up. Nagel could not believe that Torrey was going to take him out. And they brought in this young fella. I couldn't believe it either. What am I doing in there? <laughs> Got a pop up, though, Coney. I remember it well. There was nobody on base. There was two outs in the fifth inning. That was my last pitch as a Yankee. Alvarez takes upstairs. Should have asked you to do the sage pitching decisions on that. <laughs> well, Coney, we were talking earlier in the game about you can get two positives. I mean, we got two positives there. Coney felt great about himself, and we kept the lead. Huh? Kept the lead. Diddy Nagel did not feel good about it. <laughs> I've talked to Joe Torrey about that. He said to this day he has not received a Christmas card from Denny Nagel. Yeah. Must have got lost in the mail. Huh? Remember that you struggled that season. There was a lot of debate whether or not to have you on the roster, but they, they put you on the roster. That was Joe Torrey. I mean, you, you, you could have legitimately made that argument that somebody else would have been in a better position to take that spot on the playoff roster. But that had to mean a lot to you just to be on that World Series team that faced your former team. Oh, it meant a lot. It really did. That's driven out to right field. Oswaldo Cabrera puts it away. Two down. And that's where if you look back and you know that was one of Joe Torrey's strengths and you talk so much about analytics now he and Dom Zimmer felt the game a lot more than other managers other bench coaches knowing that Coney was a veteran knowing that you know how much he had done for the organization if you needed a big out you'd get it and those are the types of things that uh, you know they leave great memories about uh, a great manager and Don Zimmer being a great bench coach also. Oh and one on Jeff McNeil, a two run single in the second. I remember Joe Torrey once telling me about David Coney he said, you know, an analytics could say this guy's going to be better than David in the situation, but I know that David would commit a crime in order to get this out. Mm -hmm. And I did. <laughs> <You're trying. laughs> the O2 outside one and two. Statue of limitations. They've run out, haven't they, Coney? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and admit it now. Good. I use pine tar, right? <laughs> that one is looped in the center field. It's a base hit for Jeff McNeil. Now, Meredith, you have some news about what Oswaldo Cabrera is wearing around his neck. Well, guys, file this one under you. You probably won't see this every day. He walked by me in the clubhouse today, and I, I said, what's on your necklace? Is that a tooth? And he said, yeah, it's a, it's a tooth. My mom told me to wear it. It's his grandma Anna's tooth. What? And he said, whatever my mom tells me to do, I'm going to do. So he's a good son, but I've never seen that before, Michael. Wow. Maybe it'll bring, you know, some, now, some I've got a follow-up question. I've got a follow-up. I have a lot of follow-up questions, but we did not have a lot of time to tackle them all in the clubhouse. Is Grandma Anna still with us <laughs> without a tooth? It was a, it was a very quick conversation, <laughs> wow. Michael. 
We're going to have to do some post-game <laughs> digging. But he is a, a lovely man, and he said his mom told him to wear it. So Looks like Grandma had a filling in that tooth, too. It's all beat up. Either that or he made up an unbelievable story wow. on the spot. And if that's the case, let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story. Wow. But I've never seen that before. It, it stood out to me. <laughs> I've seen a shark tooth on some people's necklace, <laughs> yeah. but never a, a human tooth. And he said he, lo he loved his grandma. I'm going home with the story in my head, though. That, be that. funny if he's wearing a whole denture. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wash your teeth, kids. <laughs> Guys, just look out for the group text after the game. I got you on this one. All right. We're looking forward to that. Two and one on Lindor. He walked in the first. Fly ball to left in the second. Ground ball to first in the fourth. Hitting 214, 12 home runs, 43 ribbies. McNeil's on first. Two and two. You know, if you're Marinato, you got to realize that certain players come up in big, you know, in, in big situations. You got to really be careful with Lindor. I mean, not having the greatest of years, but you know, it's 12 home runs, and these are the types of moments this guy likes to be at the plate. Bottom of the six, Yankees lead 7 6. Smith warming up for the Mets. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. McNeil leads off first, held by Rizzo. Marinaccio on in relief of Severino. Three and two. Big pitch, big swing in this game. Cordero in relief probably is next. Runner goes, misses outside, a walk to Lindor. So first and second, two outs. So Jimmy Cordero is going to get the call to face Starling Marte. That'll do it for Marinaccio. He leaves with a lead, but two runners on, two outs. Cordero coming on. By Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. By FanDuel, make every moment more. And by New York Presbyterian, with world-class doctors from Columbia and Wild Cornell Medicine. Stay amazing. Ah, they have you there, David. They didn't have Jeff Nelson when the Yankees played Seattle, but they have you there. And the other greats that pitch for both teams. And, of course, Strawberry. It's Mr. Jekyll on the left, Mr. Hyde on the right. <laughs> Who'd you like better? <laughs> <laughs> on, on or off the field? <laughs> we'll leave that just everybody yeah. guess. Yeah. Here's Jimmy Cordero. Marinaccio gave up a single to McNeil, lost the battle with Lindor, walked him. Got the first two outs quickly. And now Cordero against Marte. Sterling is one for three. Two fly balls to right. And a single to right, a stolen base and a run scored. McNeil is at second, Lindor is at first. These are the tough ones for managers and pitching coaches. You still got 10 outs to get. Got to use Cordero here in this spot to get out of this inning.
1 and 0. I think Aaron Boone likes his ability to keep the ball on the ground, to keep this ball in the infield, even if it's hit hard. Grounded foul. Well, you're exactly right, Paulie. The hard sinker, hard slider combo of Cordero and the matchup with Marte is what Aaron Boone is looking at right here. One one. Two and one. Cordero has thrown two borderline pitches both the first pitch low in the strike zone that pitch right at the top and got neither call. Grounded foul, two and two. So DJ LeMay, who really, really creeping towards the line, knowing that any ground ball is not getting by him to stay fair because a double can score man on first base. And the 2 2. Strike three. Marte down looking at the slider. A big out, a big strikeout for Jimmy Cordero. No runs a hit, no errors, and two men left on base. Beautiful pitch, got the benefit of the doubt on the outside part of the plate, and Maranaccio loves it. So does Cordero. We're going to the seven. The Yankees up by one. Goes to Drew Smith. Bill Miller looks at his hand and throws him out. And Smith can't believe it. Showing his hand again. So they checked him when he came in from the bullpen. They didn't like what they saw, so that's a 10 game suspension for him. The rest of the Mets infield checking out the hand themselves, but he is out. And the Mets now have to play. A pitcher short while he's on suspension. That is the key there, and that's what Buck Showalter's thinking about right now. Not only is he thrown out of this game, but it's an automatic 10 game suspension, and you got to play a player short. You cannot replace him on the roster. So we've seen Max Scherzer thrown out. This year we've seen Domingo Herman thrown out, and now Drew Smith gets thrown out for the sticky stuff. All right, so Mets are going to call on uh, John Curtis to come in as Drew Smith has been ejected because of a sticky substance on his hand. He cannot believe it, and that will hurt the Mets as Bill Miller with the dramatic toss, and Drew Smith can't believe it. We'll come back. Audi vehicle, your local Tri-State Audi dealer today, the final out of the 2000 Subway Series. Most people that were there thought that was gone. Mo thought it was gone. Bernie made the catch. Paul O'Neill exulting with another championship. Derek Jeter, tears for Joe Torre. Paul, did you think it was out? Off the bat. I mean, everything hit hard off the bat in those days for Mike Piazza usually was, but it just, uh, it didn't have that sound. But boy, I tell you what, I was happy as anybody. From your vantage point, David, did you think it was out? Yeah, we were worried. Because it was Piazza, as, as Paul said. It was Piazza and the way he was swinging the bat at that time. Mariano's reaction, too, kind of the snap of the neck as he turned around. All right, so let's get to the Drew Smith situation as John Curtis is warming up. I'm going to defend him for a little bit. I don't know how sticky his hand was, but. The only issue that I have with this crackdown is what is the baseline? So one umpire's too sticky is another umpire's that's just fine. I mean, do the players know where the line is? Well, what we've been told from the Major League Baseball uh, front office is that they have actually taken time to train the umpires and, and show them the difference between what is rosin, 
what is something other than rosin so that they're, they've been schooled on how to tell the difference. But there's also the question of too much rosin almost being weaponized, and that is illegal as well. But that's the question. What's too much rosin? Rosin is legal to use, so what's too much rosin? Well, that, that is ultimately where the blurred lines are, to your point, Michael. And it, it is true. It's If there's some confusion out there, as there is, obviously, with Smith right here, as he goes to all of his teammates and goes, see, look, look at this. There's no way. But he obviously used something in the bullpen before he got into the game. There's another rosin bag in the bullpen on the mound as well. A look of disbelief on the face of Smith. As he is tossed from the game before throwing a pitch. So that brings on John Curtis to pitch the seventh inning. He'll face Torres, Rizzo, and LeMahieu. Glaber's 0 for 3. Now are they checking Curtis's hand? Pitch calm. I think he's having trouble hearing right now. <laughs> we got, got a lot of malfunctions going on here. We got sticky stuff. We got broken pitch comms. We got teeth hanging from people's necks. We got all kinds of stuff going on in that. Not right? just any teeth. Grandma's teeth. Oh, I forgot about that. That. That is a difference. Maybe the umpires will give them a little chemistry set and they could uh, kind of <laughs> test the pitcher's hands with a little liquid. Seven, nine, and one for the Yanks, six, eight, no for the Mets. Curtis, the sixth pitcher used by Buckshaw Walter. Line drive, it is a foul ball. One and two. Line to right field, Marte makes the play. Now a quick word from Duncan. Duncan Rewards are a hit. Save them, stack them, use them how you want. Not a member? Join on the app today. One out here in the top of the seventh inning. That'll bring up Rizzo. Rizzo hit by a pitch in the first. Single to right to start the Yankees five-run fourth inning. And then a fly ball to center. One and oh. You know, we give those numbers, you know, what the hitters do. And, and just to give a context in the American League this year, average, the batting average is 244 collectively. On base percentage 316 and slugging percentage 405. So major league average hitter has an OPS of 721. And if you're hitting 244, you're league average this year in the American League. Two and one. That surprise you, Paulie, a little bit, those numbers? Yeah, it, it really does because, you know, you expected so much more average wise, uh, you know, with the, the lack of the shift. And uh, I do love the rule changes. I do love the, the pace of the game, although this has been kind of an old school game here with all the, the slugging going on. But uh, that does. Those numbers seem a, a little low to me. They, they are up from last year and certainly left handed pole cold balls especially mm -hmm. are, are the batting averages up so there there has been a bump up in the stats across the board especially for left handed batters that pull the ball but not as much as you think right and it, you got to th figure Coney until the organizations and until baseball says hey it's important to hit 300 now and it's important for a, a, a pitcher to win 15 games things aren't going to change. You know, that's just the way it is. 
That's why it's interesting to see Luis Arise in Miami get so much yeah. attention for a potential 400 batting average chase this year. That guy's a hitting machine, hits it all over the place. Swing and a miss. You know, they made a lot of the rule changes banning the shift so that you could get offense back into the game. Does it surprise you, Paul, that strikeouts are up again this year? Well, that has a lot to do with pitching, too. And, you know, the, the bullpens are so much more superior today than they were, you know, 10 years ago. But, uh, you know, contact is not looked at uh, as an important thing as, as far as against home runs. You know, home runs have uh, become the utmost important the past few years. Fly ball to Marte, and Curtis comes on and retires the Yankees in order. Time for the seventh inning stretch at the City Field. Seven six Yanks. Thank you, Bob and Todd. Game summary: seven nine and one uh, for the Yankees, six eight no for the Mets. Severino lasted two outs in the fifth. Stanton and Lemayu each with home runs. Yankees four for six with runners in scoring position tonight. Two for eleven combined in the Red Sox series. Scherzer lasted just one out into the fourth. And Nimmo with a solo home run has scored twice and was hit by pitch. All hands on deck here at the Yes Network, right? Got Todd Frazier up in the studio. It's a big game. Todd has seen it from both sides. Mets and the Yankees. Here's Tommy Canely to pitch the bottom of the seven. And the pitch to Abadi is a strike. Abadi, two for two with a walk. One and one. You know what my semi solution would be for the rosin situation, David? When you come out on the mound, either from the dugout or from the bullpen, your hand has to be absolutely clean, nothing on it at all. So if you put a lot of rosin on there and combine some sweat on the mound, that's okay. That's natural. But why are you coming into the game with anything on your hand anyway? Because there's a rosin bag on the mound, one away. So we need a little sink behind the mound. We just wash all their hands before they take the mound, and then we go from there. No, your hands should be clean when you come in. Right. Well, the guys in the bullpen need a little help to get loose, to, mm -hmm. to just to feel the baseball. So. That's the problem is, is how to monitor it. You just say, okay, you can only use that rosin bag behind the mound, but the pitcher in the bullpen right now needs to get a grip too to warm up properly to feel the baseball. So there's a separate rosin bag out there in the bullpen. So the question becomes, can you weaponize rosin in and of itself? Is there, see, there's a, two rosin bags right there. Is there such a thing as using too much rosin and, and sort of making it too sticky above and beyond? That's where we are right now. High fly ball, deep left field, off the bat of Pham. Going back McKinney, and he has room and makes the play right in front of the wall. Just missed. Boy, off the bat, you thought this had a chance. Tommy Kane is shaking his head, but boy, your heart kind of drops. Ball up in the strike zone, just off the end of the bat, enough to keep it in the yard. Here is Guillaume. One and oh. Two and oh. A strike from Canley, two and one. Canley, long stretch on the IL to start the season. 
if he gets back to what the Yankees think he could be, he's a weapon out of the bullpen. They've been without him, obviously without Loisaga. Big loss. High fly ball, right field. Cabrera is there, and he'll make the play. As Canely retires the Mets in order. One, two, three, we go to the eighth. Run total was for our game when it started, courtesy of FanDuel. The numbers can change with every pitch, so now let's see what the live total is at this very moment. Right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and start making every moment more. Traffic moving nicely in Times Square as we go to the eighth inning. 7-6 Yankees. Kind of a lot of one. The right field deep going back Marte. One pitch, one out. There's Billy McKinney. Infield single in the six came around to score. And that's the difference in the game right now. A sack fly by the pinch hitter Josh Donaldson scored that run in the sixth. Broke a 6-6 six, six tie. And there's a strike to McKinney. Check swing. And it's going to roll and keep rolling and keep rolling and keep rolling. And it rolls foul. Wow. That ball actually rolled back fair, hit the corner of the grass, and ended up rolling foul. You see, this is going foul. It rolls back, but then it catches the grass. And that's just enough to shoot it back foul. You know who knows exactly how high that grass is down the line? Buck Showalter. Yeah, you're probably right. One of the last little pieces of gamesmanship if that used to be a big part of the game when guys were bunting for singles more often. How much dirt is in between the cutout and the foul line and how thick the grass is or how long it is. McKinney down on strikes. Hyundai thanks those who nominated an everyday hero on the Hyundai Salute to Heroes contest. One lucky hero will win a brand new 2023 Tucson. Winner will be announced soon. Here's Kyle Higashioka. One for three. And a run scored. Curtis in his second inning of work came in for Drew Smith who was thrown out before he even threw a pitch for sticky stuff. One and one. Get the parents for that. I think you do. Really? Yeah. You're not going to have another one for 10 games. <laughs> Popped up behind the plate. Alvarez giving it a look runs out of room. So Paul, have you seen your Cincinnati Reds play lately? Uh, that kid, is, he's that good, right? Oh, and boy. Ellie, yeah. Ellie De La Cruz. Did not take him long. I think his first home run almost left the stadium, 450-some feet. He's already the fastest guy in the big leagues, at least as measured by StatCast. He actually says he's the fastest guy in the world. Ground ball left side and through for a base hit. Second hit for Higashioka. I think he's had a good night at the plate uh, earlier with a big RBI single and now this off a slider. Kind of the same spot left side of the infield finds a hole. Well, that's a good finish head straight down. Came into the game hitting 229 and he's two for four. There's Anthony Volpe with a couple of doubles tonight. 
Well, this is really a time if they're Anthony Volpe, you just don't say, wow, all right, I had a good game, I got a couple hits. It's just keep building every single at bat. Keep building that confidence up, hitting the ball hard somewhere. Let's see what happens. Nagashioka kind of fell to first. <laughs> Didn't really have much of a lead. That's kind of an uncertainty in the pitcher right there, Coney. Huggy's not going anywhere. You're running out of time. Just go ahead and throw to first. Yeah, it looked like he just purposely was taking some time, trying to kill some time. High fly ball, deep left. Going back, McNeil, and he'll make the play on the track for the final out. No run to hit. One man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 7 6 Yankees. Well, come out to Yankee Stadium on Tuesday, June 20th, when the Yankees take on the Mariners for a great giveaway for the summertime. The first 18,000 guests in attendance will receive a Yankees beach towel courtesy of Wendy's. Get your tickets today at yankees.com. Wandy Peralta will pitch the eighth inning for the Yankees. He'll face 9-1-2 and two in the Mets' order. And the pitch to Kana is a strike. You're holding on to that one run lead. This is one of those nights where Aaron Boone is just going to go through this bullpen and hope everybody has their good stuff. I mean, you've gone to Marinaccio, you've gone to Cordero, you've gone to Canely, Peralta, and then you're probably going to see Holmes. Canely, a very welcome addition back into the fold. Fits right, very nicely, right in the middle of that circle of trust. Three and one. And he walked him on five pitches. This chiropractic telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees. So the tying run is on base as Canna starts off the inning with a walk. There's Nimmo. And that one is lined off the glove of a diving Volpe into left field. The base hit for Brandon Nimmo moving to second is Canna. Well, then another guy that has had a good night offensively, home run to lead off the game, and now a bullet the other way. Volpe, you saw his reaction. Thought possibly he could have had this ball. Tough play. City Field crowd of 43,707. It is the largest crowd of the year here in Queens. From that home game. And now they are getting into it with first and second, nobody out. And Alvarez at the plate. One and oh. Can tell how the Mets fan base feels about this young star. Two and zero. Oh. Peralta really working himself into a mess, and Agashioka wants to go out and talk with his left-hander. Well, we talked about Alvarez and his home run noise and what he's done so far. But another thing, if you're Peralta, if you can get him on the ground, good guy to double up. Well, they have Holmes up, and they look like they're prepared to go more than an inning with him if need be. Tomorrow 
our starter, Justin Verlander. The 2 0. Let's see if they turn two. There's one. Not in time. He beat it out. Beat out the return throw from Torres. So they get the force at second. Now runners on first and third with one man out. Now Volpe had to go to his right, which made it a, a long throw to second base. She thought possibly still have a chance. Limber winds up. Takes a little bit too much time in the transition to turn this double play. Alvarez out of the box, very good for a catcher. He's athletic, no doubt about it. A changeup, Juan De Peralta never gives in. 2-0 changeup, got him on the ground. So here's Jeff McNeil. He's two for four, a couple of RBIs. Lemayu in on the grass at third. Grounded, foul outside of first. Well, Peralta has had so much success against lefties, but McNeil, a contact hitter, just hooks this one foul. McNeil, tough to strike out, tough to double up. Throw over. Alvarez chased back. He didn't have much of a lead. Cat is the tying run. He's at third. Alvarez at first. Red light on Cabrera's arm. The others are run with caution. McKinney and Conafalefa. And that hits. McNeil to load the bases. And that'll bring up Lindor. And Aaron Boone's going to bring on Clay Holmes. A walk, a single, and a hit batter. And Wandy has loaded the bases with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees clinging to a one-run lead. Well, if you've got Clay Holmes warming up in the eighth inning, this is the spot to bring him in. Well, it'll be Holmes. Against Lindor, bases loaded, the lead hanging in the balance. Come on back. Mirror of home, grow on the path to pinstripes and get a behind-the-scenes look at some of the baby bombers during spring training with the big club. Watch Homegrown presented by Wendy's next Thursday after Yankees coverage on Yes and the Yes app. An unusual outing for Peralta. Uh, lefties were one for 35 against him coming into this game. So he gave up the Nimmo single and then hit McNeil. Two lefties that he faced. Didn't get them out. So now they turn it over to Clay Holmes, who's been pitching well of late. He inherits bases loaded, one out. And Francisco Lindor, with the bases loaded this season, he's excelled four for four, two doubles, a home run, and 12 of his 43 ribbies have come with the bases loaded. And with the bases loaded, there's a premium on a ground ball here, and Clay Holmes gives you the best chance to get that ground ball in this situation. That's why he was up in the eighth inning, and that's why he's in right now. Yeah, there's a few factors that you can't throw all in to the double play because Lindor runs so well, very hard to double up. But Clay Holmes obviously can keep the ball on the ground, and he, he's very capable of getting the strikeout, too. See, D.J. LeMahieu will play even with the bag a little bit in at third, and then they're playing double play up the middle with Volpe back. Glaber at double play death, and Rizzo even with the bag. Lindor, the Mets cleanup hitter, batting from the left side against Holmes. 1 0. Oh. Wow. That's the pitch Holmes needs right there. That heavy sinker down in the strike zone did not get the call. Looked like a really good pitch. One and one.
Marte is on deck. Holmes on the mound. Six pitcher the Yankees have used. One and two. Went to the slider there, trying to get a swing and a miss. I, I don't know if you could go back to that, Coney. Uh, you've shown a good hitter your slider already. I think you've got to go back to that heavy sinker. Foul ball. He did go back to the slider. Yeah, that ball up in the strike zone, at least it got the inside corner, which caused Lindor to, to hook and foul. He can start that sinker in off the plate and run it back to the inside corner like Greg Maddox and Oral Harshizer used to do. That might work right here. Tried that that ball come back over the inside corner. Not enough. Two and two. That was the idea. That was close. Well, he had him too. If he just gets it in a little more. Kona used to pitch a little bit, didn't he? You knew that. Huh? That was the call. <laughs> might do it again. 2 2. Missed. That's the problem with trying to throw that perfect pitch. Now you're at a full count and you've got to give in as a pitcher and throw a strike. Payoff. Swung on and missed. He got him. Power. Striking out Lindor for the second out. Well, you got to give it to Clay Holmes. He went for the strikeout on two perfect pitches, and then he just threw his good sinker over the middle of the plate and still got a swing and a miss. That shows you what kind of stuff you have when you can throw it right down the middle and still get a strikeout. Boy, this would be a Houdini act if he gets out of this. Now you've got an opportunity with two outs. Outside to Marte. Yankees seven Mets six bases loaded two outs bottom of the eighth. One and one. It's high quality sinkers right here one after another from Clay Holmes. Ten pitch by Clay Holmes. Two on one, there's no place to put Marte. Sterling Marte, one for four. Two and two, got him with the slider there. Wow. You would have got me there too, Coney. I mean, you've got to believe falling in the count, you'd go back to that sinker. Good slider off the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Yankees up by one. Just got a piece to stay alive. You like Higgy setting up that far outside, Coney? I mean, you do not want to go to full count if you don't have to. Yeah, it looked like he was going for that spillover again, that kind of swing back pitch to nip the corner, but Clay Holmes just threw it as hard as he could. And the 2-2. Most in the sellout crowd standing. Huge moment in this game. A, a seesaw affair. The Mets jumped out early. 5-1. Yankees came back with five in the fourth. Mets tied it up with a run in the fifth. Yankees took the lead with a run in the sixth. And it's 7-6 Yankees, bottom of the eighth. 2-2. Just missed outside. Now you start the merry-go-round. Three, two, two outs. The runners will go. And the pitch. Foul ball. Just got a piece to stay alive. Boy, you saw a lot of Yankee fans jump out of their seats here, thinking they got a swing and a miss. Now we go through it again. Talk about barely getting a sliver of the baseball yeah. right there. Staying alive. 
making Holmes throw it again. The 3 2. He struck him out. What a performance by Holmes. He strikes out Lindor. He strikes out Morte. And the Mets leave the bases loaded. Goes with the breaking ball. Judge likes what he sees. All the Yankees love it. Where's David? Well, you talk about a high leverage spot for Clay Holmes coming in with trouble. Strikes out Lindor on a 3-2 pitch. Strikes out Starlin Marte. You talk about win probability added. <laughs> Off the charts for Clay Holmes right there in the eighth inning. Cabrera takes a strike from David Robertson, who comes on for the Mets, their seventh pitcher. He's had a really fine season. Essentially taking over the closer role with Diaz going down during the WBC as a hitter, Paul. I mean, do you expect three, two bases loaded, a breaking ball? Absolutely not from Clay Holmes because he didn't have that sinker going sideways. He had it going down tonight. It's been as good as it's been tonight. And then three, two to have the guts to throw a slider just off the outside corner. You deserve a strikeout. David, this Clay Holmes looks like the Clay Holmes from the first half last year. Yeah, very aggressive, very much on top of his sinker. He's got his release point back. He's got a couple of different sliders, too. One that kind of goes down and one that kind of sweeps. And I'll tell you what, I don't I don't think that Cabrera knew how many strikes there were because he took that, he showed bunt, and he just took a strike three. Yeah, I think he was confused on the count, and obviously a good pitch. He's questioning what the count was. Strike to Stanton. Popped up. Left side, Lindor will put it away for the second out. I know people forget outs, Paul. Did you ever forget how many strikes during the bat? I, you know what? To tell you the truth, yes. I actually ran down to first base think, thinking I had walked one time and there wasn't four balls. So mm -hmm. it, it does happen. But yeah, I, I don't know that I ever uh, forgot how many strikes I had. Michael King is up in the Yankee bullpen. Glaber Torres grounds one right side and through for base hit. So he's one for five as he singles with two outs here in the ninth. Yeah, he's he swung the bat much better than one for five tonight. Last time up, line drive to right field. And again, that big leg kick, but inside the baseball, that ball away with a little run to it. It's nothing but a ground ball unless you stay with it. Good swing by Glaber Torres. There's Rizzo. 0 and 1. You know the thing about David Robertson this year with the Mets, he looks the same. I mean, it's almost as if he hasn't aged at all. And the, the veteran right, he's still throwing 94 mile an hour cutters. Still has a good breaking ball. That's the same stuff he's always featured for, for the most part. Swing and a miss. There's that curve, and that'll do it. Here in the top of the ninth, Yankee Strand one, bottom of the ninth coming up for the Mets. A rematch as the Bombers head to Fenway to take on the Boston Red Sox. Coverage begins at six with Audi batting practice in the pregame. That first pitch will be shortly after seven on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. Well, the Yankees will go to their seventh pitcher. They will ask Michael King to try to get the final three outs. We're here at City Field, bottom of the ninth inning. Yankees lead 7-6, first game of the two-game beginning of the Subway Series. 
why are people leaving this game right now? But I guess beating traffic is important. Michael King will try to complete a really good night for the bullpen. Well, the Yankees are true to form. This is what they said they wanted. They want to just hunt out high leverage spots for their bullpen pieces. They want to have interchangeable parts and multiple guys who could close the game. Michael King finding himself here with the bases loaded. And Clay Holmes in that high leverage spot was more important to them at that point. The game was on the line. Now nobody out of clean inning. Now Michael King's got a chance to get the save. But the highest leverage spot was last inning for Clay Holmes. See the Mets bench there and Buck Showalter's options. So yeah, I understand the move and yeah, I, I, I think it's probably the right move. There's Beatty. Pitch outside, 1-0. Question becomes, can King throw enough strikes here? You can tell pretty early on if he's got his good stuff and if he's owning the strike zone. He's very capable with his stuff of closing this game. Ground ball right to Torres. Goes down to one knee, straightens and throws. One down. Well, fans, stay tuned after the final out for tonight's WB Mason Yankees postgame. Get highlights, analysis, and a player reaction. Plus, Aaron Boone on the manager's report. It's all coming up next on Yes and the Yes app. Remember, Yes has postgame coverage after all 162 Yankee games, including the second game of the Subway Series tomorrow night. Here's Tommy Pham against Michael King. And there's a strike. Tomorrow's starter, Garrett Cole, going up against his former teammate, Justin Verlander. Owen oh 2 on Pham. Yankees down 5-1 one at one point, and they battle back. They lead 7-6, one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning at City Field. Two and two on Pham. Swing and a miss. Fam down on strikes. Mets down to their final out. You think of Michael King as that fastball slider, and this is a really good changeup. Fam, no idea. That's not in your mind as a hitter when you're facing Michael King. Pulled the ripcord. Here is a Guillaume. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. One and oh. Yankee fans trying to take over City Field with a let's go Yankee chant here in the bottom of the ninth. Many fans heading for the exits. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, Mets down by one. Fly ball. Left center. Right there is IKF, and the Yankees win a gritty game as King retires the Mets in order one, two, three. Yankees down five to one. They come back. So many good things about this game. The one thing you worry about is Severino's shoddy start, but the Yankees battle back their bullpen and their offense. Yeah, you want to be a big league manager, you're right? You're second guessing and are in the middle of this game, and then you pull Clay Holmes out. He gets the job done. King, one, two, three in the ninth. Aaron Boone pushing the right buttons at the end of this game. Yankees, a big win here at City Field. Yeah, I agree. I mean, some wins are bigger than others. To come back from five to one after kind of a shaky homestand right there. Stanton, a big home run. DJ LeMayhew, a big home run. Garrett Cole on the mound tomorrow. You've got to fight for every game right now if you're the Yankees, and they fought back tonight. You could write the story of this game off that eighth inning. Bases loaded, one out. And the job by Clay Holmes. That's how the Yankees win this one 7-6. We'll come back and the post game after that. <laughs>